Everyone has bad games, even stars or superstars. There's a ton of pressure in every NBA game, but the finals are where players' legacies are created or shattered. Even players who are known to be very clutch have had their moments of struggle. How's it going fellas, my name's Andy, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at 5 of the worst finals performances by star players. As for the order of my list, it's just based on what I think had the biggest impact on each player's legacy. Alright, let's get started. Number 6, Ray Allen, 2010, Game 3 To start things off, we got Ray Allen. I'm not actually sure how many people remember this game, but back in the 2010 finals, Allen struggled a lot shooting the basketball. For the entire series, he shot less than 30% from 3, and in Game 3, he hit rock bottom. After scoring 32 points in the previous game and helping the Celtics tie the series up at one game apiece, Allen followed that up with an abysmal performance in Game 3. He was 0 for 13 from the field while missing all 8 of his 3 point attempts. Yikes, he finished the game with 2 points from free throws and the Celtics ended up losing the game by 7. Yeah, it was not a game Allen wanted to remember. Part of it was the Lakers defense focusing on him, but he also missed a ton of wide open shots. This was by far the worst game of Allen's career, and as for the impact on his legacy, well, I guess it's not a huge deal. Throughout the series, Allen's jump shot was very inconsistent, and a lot of his shots were flat. And this was 2010, Allen was closer to being a role player than a star. He was getting pretty old too, so he gets a pass. But out of the Celtics Big Four, Allen definitely played the worst in that finals. That series also went to 7 games, so if Allen just played like his normal self, then the Celtics might have won the championship. Number 5, Kobe Bryant, 2004, Game 3 The 2004 finals were, uh, not what the Lakers planned. Having formed their new super team, everyone thought that they just rolled through the playoffs and win the title. Nobody thought the Pistons, a team that had the 18th best offense in the league and no big name players, would throttle them in 5 games. This was Kobe's worst series of his career, and his performance in Game 3 was the worst of it. He scored only 11 points on 4 for 13 shooting and committed 4 turnovers. The Lakers as a team only scored 68 points, and what's even crazier was that Kobe fell right into the Pistons' game plan. According to Chauncey Billups, he said that they had a very calculated game plan. They were going to just play Shaq straight up one-on-one, -on -one, so the Lakers would probably feed him the ball every possession. Then he said, but what's going to happen is Mr. Bryant is going to get a little discouraged with getting no touches and now the second half comes around and now he's pressing. He's going to start coming down and just breaking the offense. When you do that, you're done. You're playing right into our hands. Even if you start making those shots, you're finished. And for the most part, that's pretty much what happened. For the series, Shaq played very well, averaging 27 points on 63% shooting. Kobe, on the other hand, took 30 more shots than Shaq in the series and scored 20 fewer points. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but the funny thing is, this series didn't seem to affect Kobe's legacy whatsoever. Kobe's poor performance against Detroit was even worse than LeBron vs the Mavericks, yet barely anybody brings it up. I'm not sure why that's the case, I guess it was a while ago, but still. Number 4, Steph Curry, 2015, Game 2 Ah yes, the series that made everyone believe that Curry is unclutch in the finals. But the truth is, he only had one bad game, although it was a terrible game. In game 2, he was 5 for 23 from the field, including 2 for 15 from 3, and also had 6 turnovers. He set the finals record for the most missed 3 pointers in a single game, ever. This was the game where Della Vadova was hounding him on defense. He played so hard that he was sent to the hospital for dehydration. But when I rewatched the highlights of that game, yeah, Delhi's defense was amazing, but Curry was also missing a lot of shots he normally makes. Some of these shots are what he took all season, but misses happen sometimes when you're a shooter. But what's impressive was that Delhi stopped him multiple times from getting to the rim. This game was also the reason why Curry did not get Finals MVP, which I believe he deserved. He played well for the series, but there was that whole narrative of him getting shut down by Delhi, and then Iguodala moved into the starting lineup and helped the Warriors win 3 straight games. So yeah, that worked against Curry's favor. Regardless, it was still a really bad game, one of the worst in recent history from a reigning MVP. Even today, there are still fans who throw the choker label on Curry, even though that's not really the case. 
it was just one terrible game that made all the major headlines because Delhi was the underdog and it was like a David vs Goliath moment. He was pretty good for the rest of the series. Number 3, Reggie Miller 2000 Game 1 By 2000, Miller was getting kinda old. He was 34 but still got selected as an all-star that year and the Pacers were really, really good. This was Miller's first ever game in the finals and the nerves were kicking in. In game 1, he went 1 for 16 from the field in 41 minutes. It was by far the worst game of his career and a lot of it had to do with Kobe's defense. He was chasing him all over the course, but Miller did get a ton of clean looks, he just missed them. However, this poor performance didn't faze him at all. After the game, he said, I'm going to shoot my way out of it, I can't stop shooting, I feel bad I only got up 16 shots. If I was going to be 1 for 16, I at least should have been 1 for 25 or something like that. I really feel like I didn't get enough looks. And that's exactly what he did. For games 2 to 6, Miller averaged 28 points on great efficiency, so he bounced back very nicely. Unfortunately for him, the Pacers would lose the series in 6 games and Reggie would never reach the finals again for the rest of his career. But this one game didn't hurt his legacy that much. He's still one of the most clutch players in NBA history because of his body of work and the 2000 Indiana Pacers were great because of their total team efforts and never relied on one player. Plus, the Lakers were a powerhouse that year and the clear favorites to win. But imagine if Reggie did lead his team to a championship that year. He'd probably be a consensus top 5 shooting guard ever. Number 2, LeBron 2011 Game 4 can't really have a list like this without putting a 2011 LeBron game. Throughout the series, LeBron was really passive and averaged about 2 points per game in the 4th quarter. Game 4 was the worst. In almost 46 minutes of playing time, LeBron recorded 8 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists, 4 turnovers on 3 for 11 shooting. 3 for 11 is not good, but it's not like he was having a terrible shooting night. It's the fact that he took just 11 shots in 46 minutes. For the entire series, he averaged fewer points per game than Chris Bosh. I'm sure we all know by now how mediocre LeBron was in that series, but the main problem was how damaging it was to his legacy. 2011 is still fresh on everybody's mind and it's the major thing people reference as to why he'll never be the GOAT. Despite being the best player in the world, he took a back seat and became the third option when his team needed him. The sad part is that if LeBron played like his usual self and the Heat did win the 2011 championship, it wouldn't affect his legacy whatsoever because they were expected to win anyway. It's kinda unfair, but that's how it works. But there is a bright side, LeBron losing in 2011 helped him become the player he is today. He said, quote, I wasn't a complete basketball player. Dwayne Casey drew up a game plan against me in that 2011 series in the finals when I played Dallas to take away things I was very good at and to try and make me do things I wasn't very good at. He's part of the reason why I am who I am today. If only Casey could have done that with the Raptors. At the end of the day, this loss forced LeBron to get even better, so it helped him out. And finally, number 1, John Starks 1994, Game 7. I've talked about this game before, but it doesn't get any more legacy defining than this. The 94 season was Stark's breakout year, he made the all-star team for the first and only season of his career, averaging career highs in points and assists. The Knicks reached the finals for the first time since 1973 and were on the verge of capturing the title. Starks was red hot, scoring 27 points in the previous game, but it did not carry over. In Game 7, he scored 8 points on 2 for 18 shooting, 0 for 11 from 3. The Knicks lost by 6 points. Now, I put this game at number 1 on my list because it's literally what everyone thinks of when his name gets brought up. We don't really talk about his flashy playstyle, his charisma, his explosive athleticism, or his dunk on Jordan and Horace Grant. Stark's entire legacy is defined by arguably the worst choke in finals history by an all-star. Coincidentally, his career started to drop off after that season, or maybe it wasn't a coincidence, he was never the same player again. And that's all folks, those were 6 of the worst performances by NBA stars in the finals. I'm sure there are tons more, so let me know in the comments which ones you think should have made the list. It's always cool to see how much a player's legacy or perception can be affected by just one game or one series. We saw that with LeBron and Curry recently. That's cause pretty much every basketball fan watches the NBA Finals, so if you have a bad game, everyone's gonna remember it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace. Yo, check out my new shirt.
Hoopsgold.com. Long live the king.